wonderful life. Greetings Capsuleers, this is Lex with Lexan82 Gaming, and first off, let me apologize for how long it has taken me to finish this video. It has been mostly real-world issues, and a lot of my activities in-game have changed dramatically over the past few weeks. I'm hoping I'll be able to get more videos to you sooner now, and the final video in this series will cover how to run C4 wormhole sites using two tangus and a boosting alt. So please subscribe if you're interested in learning that. I hope you learned something from this video. And without further ado, I present to you how to roll wormholes. To understand how to separate your wormhole into its own instance of EVE, you need to understand how wormhole mechanics works. Imagine each star system is its own instance, and they are linked by roaming doors, or wormholes. Now these wormholes have a limited lifetime and a limited mass before they collapse. In our example here, we have your home system, the C4. There are two static connections, the C247, which leads to the C3, and the N766, which leads to the C2. There's also a K162, and that links to a C5. You can see the front of that one as the E175. If you collapse a K162, which is the back side of the wormhole, then a new one will not respawn. A new wormhole will only respawn if the one you collapsed was a static meaning that connection always exists in that hole. In this case, we're talking about the C247 and the N766. Now, once those wormholes are collapsed, a new signature will spawn for each of those. However, a new wormhole connection will not be made unless you actually scan down and warp to the new signatures. This is how we achieve our own instance of EVE. The only connection that can be made is a K162 from another wormhole. But how do we know when a wormhole is about to collapse? Well, we can do a show info on the wormhole, and we can see both in time and mass how much longer it has left. If you see life cycle has not begun, it means the wormhole has just formed. If you see probably won't last a day, it means over 25% of its life is remaining, and this is the bulk of its lifetime. If you see it's reaching the end of its natural lifetime, it means there's less than 25% life remaining. However, this can still be a long time, as 25% of 16 hours is 4 hours. For its mass, we'll see messages such as, has not yet had its stability significantly disrupted. That means more than 50% of its mass remains. has had its stability reduced but not to a critical degree yet means there's still between 10% and 50% of its mass remaining. If you see that this wormhole has had its stability critically disrupted, basically is on the verge of collapse, that means there's less than 10% of its mass remaining. But how do we find out how much mass or lifetime the wormhole is supposed to have? For that, we'll use Vippy. We go to eve-vippy.com. We'll go to wormhole info and to wormhole mass table. Now here we can see all the information for all the different types of wormholes available in EVE. We can see the amount of mass the wormhole will allow to jump through it. We can see its total mass before it collapses and we can see its lifetime in hours. We also see here that the C247 and the N766 are both 2 billion mass. We're going to simplify that by taking it down to 2,000. So now our wormhole will be at 2,000. Let's take a look at the ships we'll be using. We'll be using an Orca, which is 250 million mass. We'll be using an Armageddon, which is 100 million mass. And we'll be using a Devoter, which is 15 million mass. We'll round those down to the hundreds, so an Oracle will be 250, Armageddon will be 100, and the Devoter would be 15, 
And for the prop mod, you will always add 50 million. We'll round that to 50. So for an orca, we get a total mass of 300 per jump. For an Armageddon, 150 per jump. And for a devoter, 65 per jump. And any time we jump with the prop mod on, we call that jumping heavy. Okay, so now we're in our Kovop ship. It's on the back side of the hole. I'm burning away 150 kilometers off the hole to create a bookmark so that I can warp the orca or the battleship or whichever ship I'm using to roll the hole. I can warp it to this bookmark and then back to the wormhole with very little delay. This is to prevent having to burn slowly all the way back to the hole, thus reducing your time on grid. Okay, here we are in the wormhole, and what I'm doing is I'm opening a notepad, and I'm going to write down the total mass for each of the wormholes. I'm going to be rolling two wormholes, both of the statics, a C2 and the C3, and I'm um, rounding both of those down to 2,000, which represents the 2 billion mass that we talked about earlier. Now I'm going to speed through the footage a little bit so that I don't bore you by showing you a bunch of orca jumps. However, I'd like to talk about some very important things to do while rolling. You always want to check the show info on the wormhole before you make a jump. Either jumping in or jumping out of your system, you need to be tracking the show info mass message to accurately gauge how much mass is remaining. You should be expecting to see the stage 2 message, which will mention the mass is reduced but not critical once the wormhole mass is below 50%. You should know that after making 4 jumps with the orca, that you should be seeing that message. If you see it by the third jump, you know that someone at some point put a significant amount of mass through the wormhole. This will muddy up your perfect world calculation, and you'll need to possibly adjust the mass of your ship by possibly not using the prop mod on one of the jumps, or maybe even using a battleship instead of using an orca for one of the last few jumps. It all depends on when you see the stage 2 message, so as you jump through the wormholes, be sure to check that you're seeing the correct messages for the amount of mass you are personally putting through it. This leads me to my next point, which is that even though you may have put the correct amount of mass for that wormhole, the wormhole may not have closed entirely, leaving you with a critical message. This occurs because the exact mass on a wormhole fluctuates by up to 10%. At this point, you can either leave the wormhole as it is, with the comfort that most wormholers will not likely enter through a critical wormhole with an invasion fleet, or this is the time when we would use the devoter. Now, heavy interdiction cruisers have a special niche here in wormhole space. They have the capability to dramatically lower their mass by using their interdiction sphere launchers. When a devoter or other hick deploys a bubble, its mass is lowered. A rolling hick fit will usually have three to four sphere launchers, thus lowering its mass to that of a frigate. This means you can safely jump through a critical mass wormhole and then put significant mass back through it from the other side. The procedure is to warp to the wormhole at zero, deploy all your bubbles, jump through, reapproach with the prop mod on, and then jump back in. You can repeat these steps as many times as necessary until the wormhole collapses, which we call a headshot. Finally, it's important to remain vigilant once the wormholes have been collapsed. You should continue to check D-Scan in case your wormhole has been seeded, which means that an enemy has logged off in your wormhole with the express intent of ganking you while you run PvE sites in your system. However, you primarily need to watch for the emergence of fresh signatures. To do this accurately, you should highlight and ignore all signatures as soon as the new signatures from your static have reappeared. When a new signature appears, it will pop up as the only signature on your probe scanner window. Be prepared to quickly scan it down to verify it is indeed a wormhole. If it is, you can rest assured someone has likely already jumped into your system. It is of note, however, that if someone warps to a fresh wormhole, but does not jump through, it starts a timer that will eventually link the wormhole to another system. I hope this has helped explain how wormholing is actually a relatively very safe activity, although with everything in EVE, risks still remain. 
Thankfully, with wormhole space, big risks equal big reward, and the ISK is well worth the effort. The remainder of this video will show me successfully rolling the two statics. If you've gained all the knowledge you need up to this point, good luck out there and fly safe. For those of you sticking around, I'll pipe down and let the process speak for itself.